Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Cartwheels. It's from Fig Tree Designs, and something I love is that in this spot here, where you might expect to see a cornerstone, we've actually got a star, and that echoes these bigger stars that are in the center of each block. This is a layer cake pattern. I'm going to use one from Moda that's called Garden Gatherings, and it's designed by Primitive Gatherings for Moda. So layer cakes, those are 10 inch squares, and there's a whole bunch of different colors here, and that will be used for all of these parts here, all the patchwork parts. Now, where they're showing red on the pattern, I'm going to use green. And I'm going to use this green grunge. It has a little bit of other color in it. I'm also going to need a background. I'm using solid bone. And then around here, you can hardly tell it's a different fabric. And instead of using a print there, I'm going to use another grunge. This is one called Sugar Cookie. It has a little bit of green in it, and I think that will look really good with our stars and with all of our patchwork. The pattern makes a 64 and a half inch square quilt. And what we need is one layer cake, a yard and a quarter of our fabric for the stars, for the sashing and inner border, two yards, two and a quarter of the background, and then we're gonna add an outer border, backing and binding, but we'll worry about those after we get all the patchwork done. Let's pick out the layer cake squares that we're going to use. There's 40 in here, and we only need to use 32. So I have a feeling I'm gonna use all of these dark ones. I won't use these light ones right here because there is not enough contrast between those and the background. And what's left is probably about 32. I might just take out one or two of the greens or one or two of the repeats, and then we'll have a nice blend of purple, green, blue, gold, red. Each one of the layer cake squares will give us all the pieces we need for either the outside, where it's yellow there, or the inside where it's blue. Now my layer cake squares, they're all multicolored, so I'm just gonna split them into two stacks. If you had just two or three different colors, you might wanna do a little planning for which fabric is going to go where. I've gone ahead and sorted all of my layer cake squares, and I'm gonna do the sub cutting on the squares as well as the background and the accents. I can't give you the exact sizes because it's not my pattern, but all the numbers you need are included in the directions. Okay, the cutting is all done, and for the first step, we need one of these big background squares and four of the larger size of our accent squares. We need to make a line across the back side of these squares along the diagonal, and the pattern gives us two methods. The first is to mark the back of these. You can either use a pencil, or if that doesn't show, you can use a chalk pencil. And the second is just to take the square and fold it in half, and then iron it. So both methods are going to give us a nice line that we can use to stitch across. So you can use whichever method you prefer. They both work well. Each of these corners gets one square added to it. I'm lining up the edges, the raw edges, and stitching right along the drawn line. I'm adding to the opposite corner here. And I'm going to finger press both of these to the outside. So I'm just gently ironing it with my finger right along that seam. You do want to trim off the excess here. So I'm using my scissors and trimming it down so I only have a quarter inch seam allowance left there. Next step is to add to the last two corners. So because we trimmed off 
those excess two layers, we're going to have less bulk here. And that helps the patchwork lay nice and flat. After all four corners are on, you do want to take it over to your ironing board and press it nice and flat because the, the finger pressing works really well, but I always like to add a lot of steam and get these really, really flat. Look what we have there, a nice square in a square. We're going to need 16 of these, so I'm going to go ahead and get them all stitched up. The next step is to take four of the background rectangles and the same size accent square we used before, the bigger one, we're going to need eight of those and we're going to mark the back and take them to the sewing machine. We're making flying geese blocks here so that means we are going to add one accent to this corner finger press it over and trim. Then just add the second one with the line going the opposite way. Finger press and trim. And we need to make four of these flying geese units for each block. I've gone ahead and ironed these up as well. So we're going to take those four flying geese, one of these blocks, and then four background squares, the smaller size ones, back to the machine. Let's lay out the star. These go on the sides of that center block, and then there's just these four in the corners. And I'm going to make it a row at a time. So let's start with this first row here. For this row, I'm going to finger press toward the outside of the block because there's a seam allowance there and so it wants to lay that way. I always try to finger press in a direction that the patchwork wants to go because that just makes it much easier to get it flat. And I'll do the same thing with the bottom row. For the middle row, we want to be sure we match all of these intersections. So let's start with these two pieces. I'm going to put them right sides together, line up the corners there, and take a couple of stitches because that anchors everything down. Now, I want to make sure to match this intersection right here with that intersection. So I'm going to use a straight pin and I'm going to stick it through the back. So the pin is coming through right here. And then I'm going to take the point of the pin and I'm going to put it in right where I want the intersections to match. So I'm just poking it right there and I'm not putting the pin through, it's just holding it down and I'm going to slide this fabric down and I'm holding this pin here to anchor everything together and I'm sliding up toward it as I stitch. And I want my needle to hit right where that pin is so when I get close I'm going to take it out and keep stitching. That really helps keep everything in position so we can get a nice good point there. Look, even with as hard as I tried, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. Now this seam allowance is going to go towards the middle and then, then let's do the next one and see if we can get it a little bit closer. So I notice as I sew these, I get better and better as I go. And you'll probably find the same thing will happen. So again, the pin is going in here and then it's going to poke right in that spot there. We'll slide everything down and try to stitch right to where the pin was. 
and I take it out right before I get to it. Let's see if this one's a little better. Almost perfect. So again, put the seam allowance toward the center there. And now we'll add these two pieces. And we've got more intersections to match, but these seam allowances here will be nesting. So they're real easy to match. And then this one, we will use the pin again. That one's just about perfect. You will probably find that you get better as you go, like I am. So I'm gonna iron this one up. I've got the center of the block done, and I need to pick out fabrics to go around the block. These smaller pieces, we've got them in sets of eight. And let's try this orange, that'll go around it first. Then these larger pieces, they'll go around second. So we want something that's in a contrasting color and I think this navy will look nice. We also need 16 of the smaller background squares, and they need to be marked on the back side, on the diagonal, just like we did earlier. Each of these pieces gets two corners added, but they're going to go on opposite corners, not like the flying geese we just did. You can just move that out of the way, or you can finger press it, iron it and trim it right now, or you can just fold it back a little and add this second corner. So here's what it looks like once we have both on. I'm gonna trim off that excess and it's up to you whether you want to iron first and then, and then trim or trim right here at the machine. I do want to get them all ironed up. Four of them get made this way. Then we need to make the other four with the pieces on the opposite corners. So we're going to put four this way and four that way. One thing I'd like to mention I did show you how you could finger press these and trim them over at the machine, but now that I've done a few of them, I think it's more accurate to press it here because you've got the whole background and we're folding those corners to match everything and I think it just comes out a little more accurate when I do it like that. So I'm going to press it first, then trim off the extra, the extra after it's pressed. All these are done, and we're gonna take these and four more of the same size square along with the star back to the machine. Here's how these go together. The background squares go in the corners, and then we're using pairs of these on each side. So two there, and they make a little point in the middle. Two there, two there, and two there. So the first step is to take all the pairs and sew them together. I'm finger pressing the seam to one side. I'm gonna press it to the right, and I'm gonna do that with all the pairs. There's the last one. And I can sew everything together using the same method I did when I made that star. I'm gonna make the top row and put the seam allowances pressed to the outside. We do that for the top and bottom row. We can put the sides on here, and there's no matching, so it's very easy to stitch these together. They're the same length. So all I have to do is line up the top and stitch down to the bottom. And I'm being careful with my quarter inch seam allowance 
and I'll show you why when I open this up. We want those points to be real pointy like they are there. A good way to help you do that is if you put this piece on here, but then stitch from this side, because now we can see where those seam allowances cross there. I'll show you when I'm stitching here. Even though this seam allowance is folded that way, I can lift it up to make sure that I'm sewing where those points come together. And then I won't get the tip of the star um, blocked off. I don't like the tips cut off there. So I can look, put it back down. Now when I open up, we'll have nice strong tips. I mean, technically when you're using a quarter inch seam, everything will have a nice tip. But I always like to double check and make sure that's going to happen. So again, when I stitch this on here, I'm going to stitch from this side, and these seams allow these seam allowances are going to the outside, so it's very easy to stitch right across that point. The seam allowances for all four of these outer pieces get pressed toward the middle. So I'm pulling it open and then I'm drawing my fingernail or even the pad of my finger right along that. It really helps when you do this finger pressing so that when you take it to the ironing board, everything is always already laying in the direction you want it to lay in. It makes it a lot easier to use the actual iron if you've done nice finger pressing first. To add the next row around, we need the navy pieces. We need eight background squares, the same size. And then out of this secondary background color that we cut, we're gonna grab eight of those squares that are the same size, and we're gonna mark the back of both of these just like we did before along the diagonal. I'm gonna use the same method I used before, one piece with these on the corners. So this is the plain background, and this is the secondary color of background. So we're going to do four like that, and then we're going to do four the opposite way. So again, that plain one in the middle, the secondary color on the outside. Four this way, four that way. Once those are finished, we'll take these along with the star and four more of these secondary background squares. Back to the machine. The four squares go in the corners. And these make another peak, just like we did the first time. So one going this way and one going that way. And the plain background is in the middle and that secondary background, that's the one that's on the outside there. So the first step is to sew these ones into pairs. Let me get it all laid out first here. There we go. All right, four peaks there. So I'm going to sew these into pairs. And when we did the first time around, we pressed that seam allowance to the right. So this time, I'm going to press the seam allowance to the left and that will make it easier to match up the pieces when we come to sew this onto here because these seam allowances will be going in opposite directions. I've gone ahead and stitched all those pairs of the navy patchwork together and then I added the four corner squares all we have to do now is stitch these three pieces together, stitch that to that to that, and it's the same method that we did earlier. There's no extra special matching to put all these together. That's the whole block right there. There are a lot of seam allowances in it, so it takes a fair amount of ironing to get it nice and flat. But if you keep scooching everything back to straight as you use your steam, you can get it nice and square, it makes your patchwork look more accurate, 
there. That's the first block. There's 16 in the quilt, so I'm gonna go ahead and make up the other 15. The blocks are all done, and the next thing we want to work on is these patchwork little stars here that are going to form our sashing and cornerstones. I'm gonna take one of the secondary background fabrics and four of the accent squares, and I'm gonna mark the back of these guys. One of these goes into each of the corners. It's gonna line everything up and stitch along that drawn line. And I can finger press that to the corner there. And now I'll do the opposite corner. Then trim off the back two layers. So you've got a quarter inch left. And put on the remaining two corners. I went ahead and ironed this up and trimmed off the last two corners. And that's the only unique piece that we need to make to do the sashing and cornerstones. The other parts, we're gonna take this and four of these guys, and we're gonna make another one of these units, but it's smaller. Then we're going to take one of these and two more corners, and we're gonna make some of these units using the exact same method we used earlier. They're just going to turn out a little bit smaller. I've got all the parts and pieces we need to lay out the quilt. I'm going to start with the patchwork blocks. There's 16 of them, so we will have a four by four block patchwork. And right now, I'm not gonna worry at all about what color is next to what. I'm just gonna get them in position. There, I like how the blocks look. The quilt would be awesome with just plain sashing and cornerstones, and the pattern does give you that as an option. But I think when you see this, you can see how happy this is making me because these have those little pieces on the end and we put that there and one of these guys right there, look, it's a little teeny star that looks just like those big ones. So this is interesting with the extra pieces that go around the outside, but you can see that it's not a full star all the way around the edges here. And we have a solution for that. These little guys, that is going to make the very last bit of the star. And then we've got these pieces that fit between them. And so we're gonna end up with whole stars all the way around the outside of the quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of it laid out. Then there's just one more border to put on and I can get it loaded onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt loaded and we need to pick a thread color. I really wanna keep the thread pretty subdued because these stars pop out so nicely. So this would be the most extreme choice here. It's about the same color as the stars. It would add a little bit little bit of color there it actually would look pretty nice I'm also considering doing this thread that's the same color as the background and it really doesn't show that much on top of the green that would also work but I think that this gold will be the best choice it's going to blend into the background it barely shows it shows a little bit on the green and that's okay so let's go with the gold for the quilting pattern I'm using one called rosebuds it's fairly simple and it has some nice little swirls and there are some little buds in there, but it doesn't look real flowery. So this should look very nice on that patchwork.
I have the cartwheels quilt all done and it was a very satisfying quilt to make. The thing I like the best is these stars that are in the sashing cornerstone area. I would just love to give my thanks to Joanna Figueroa, that's the pattern designer for Fig Tree and Company, because the method was just so awesome. It really breaks up all that solid. It just makes a great focal point besides the squares, which are also awesome. So there was a fair amount of matching in here, but you can see the tips real clearly and it was super easy to get all these tips nice and sharp. For the quilting, there's that swirly little rosebud pattern. Can't see it on the back because I used an overall small print from the Garden Gatherings line, but the quilting on the top, it enhances it, but it doesn't take over at all. It finished 64 by 64, but it's pretty easy to make it bigger because remember we used one layer cake square for this inner circle and another one for this outer circle. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. We really appreciate you spending your time with us. And as a little thank you, we're doing a giveaway. We do this at the end of each video. Today's giveaway, these are a couple of little doggy quilts. It's called A Dog's Life. This is a panel that we got from Clothworks and it has a little patchwork around it. Really cute quilting with some bones here. And then there's a second one here. The border's just a little bit different. So you have two chances to win today and it's very easy to enter. All you do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway. And you put in your name and your email address. And we can send these to a winner, two winners to two winners anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.